Hey, I'm Mike Inslee, and I play the Baron here on Nightmare Theater. Um, we started the show in 2001. Um, it was, you know, poorly timed. It was right, we premiered a month after September 11th, essentially. Um, but hopefully we gave people something to laugh at uh, in that time. But uh, we started in, uh, my wife has always been super supportive of the show. She let us, her father owned a fishing cabin uh, out by the beach. And we first started doing our first episodes out there. It was a vacant place. We were just set up and we had some um, lights from a, a home improvement store that we put on uh, poles. We had a, a camera sitting on a chair on some books. And that's how we shot the first episodes of Nightmare Theater. Eventually, um, Chip, my partner in this, uh, for, for since the beginning, El Sapo, he, uh, he moved into uh, uh, an apartment and had an extra room. And so we set up in that room. We, we took some material. I, I used to work in, pr in printing and we had some film that we used to make plates and, and for printing things. And that film was highly flammable. So we decided to spray paint it and tack it up on the walls and then light candles. And luckily we didn't die, but uh, it, it still was a way to do it. We made it look like stone. We, we, just, we just kind of put it all together ourselves. Um, and, and that's kind of how we started. In the old days, we never had scripts. We always improvised everything. And then when we came here to WSRE to start working on shows, we started writing scripts. Uh, Chip generally breaks everything down, uh, makes, and, and then I go in and kind of add some more jokes or change some stuff that, you know, change character voices and that kind of thing. And so that's kind of how we write. We, it's collaborative. We, we collaborate on the computer mainly, and then we get to the finished script that we bring to the set here and, and, uh, and get the shows done. Well, obviously being on WSRE has made a whole lot of difference. And um, we, when Chip and I started, it was just he and I pretty much, you know, our families would help out every once in a while. They would do something, you know, to help with the show and that sort of thing. But it was mostly just Chip and I doing it. Um, we would, like I said, we would outline out our episodes, write some bits, go and shoot all the bits. And then I would work in, uh, at that time, what was the program? Pinnacle Studio was this program I was working in. That was a long time ago. Uh, and I had a PC and I had a camcorder that would let me capture movies through the camcorder. So I had to run everything through there. I had no way to edit the movie completely on the computer. It just at that time, the computer wasn't big enough to hold an entire movie. So what we would do is I, I had a three quarter inch tape machine that came to me in a nefarious sort of way from the guy who now produces our show, Brent Burton. He found us a, a three quarter inch tape machine that fell off the back of a truck. And so we would, uh, I would go through, I would do the movie, I would hit the pause button on the three quarter inch machine, hook up the camcorder that had all of our bits that I have exported back out to the camcorder, uh, slip those in and then pause again and then start the movie again. So those first episodes are pretty rough but it didn't matter because we were having fun and that's all we wanted to do anyway. Uh, eventually when we got here to WSRE, we have an amazing crew. Uh, uh, everybody here has been super supportive of us. And so that makes it a lot easier on us because we can focus on the writing and the acting rather than having to spend all of my Sundays doing editing an entire episode that would take me about eight to 10 hours to edit. Yeah, we've definitely come a long way since we started and, and, and this, the show keeps getting better and better, I think. We've come a long way. Who's running around? <laughs> a lot of the movies that we show on the show are in the public domain. That means that Roger Corman never reviewed, re never renewed the rights, which he did a lot, or never put rights on the films in the first place. Roger Corman was notoriously bad about this. If you read his autobiography and, and several of the other biographies, it all mentions that, that Roger just never he just never felt it was that big a deal. He didn't know these movies were gonna live on. He figured he'd show them in a few drive-ins and they'd disappear forever. Uh, so luckily, thank you, Roger. We really appreciate you for leaving those movies out there. But a lot of other movies were made regionally and people just didn't know how to copyright them. I guess the most famous one would be Plan, uh, would be a Night, Night of the Living Dead because, well, Plan 9 from Outer Space, but that's a whole other story. We'll, we won't talk about that one today. But Night of the Living Dead is probably the most famous. Uh, I actually got to meet George Romero once and he said, yeah, we really messed that up. You just keep playing it as much as you can. So hopefully in a future season here, we're gonna see Night of the Living Dead on Nightmare Theater. Well, the, the Baron Mondo Von Dorn is a, He's, he's middle management in hell. That's kind of his job. He, he's not like a, a guy that's done, you know, his biggest thing that he accomplished in his career was he introduced New Coke. You know, that was one of his big, big 
things that got him kind of noticed by other people. But uh, he, he, he's been given this horrible task of, uh, of running this television station in hell. Uh, and it's, it's just not, there's nothing to show. And, and then he, the only person he can count on to get him movies to show on this station to keep his bosses happy is El Sapo. And you know how that goes. The kind of movies that El Sapo brings us are just the dregs of society, the dregs of the film world, the bottom of the barrel stuff that you, you, you scrape out and, and you hope somebody will watch. I mean, I'm, I'm sure several of these, uh, these movies are probably considered war crimes. Um, since time immemorial, Chip Chisholm and I have been friends. I, I think we met in 1988, if I recall correctly. Um, and we've done a lot of things together over the years. We've always done creative projects together. We used to publish a zine, a magazine of our own. We were in professional wrestling for a short time. I, w I was the wrestler, obviously. Chip was my manager. Um, uh, he's not he's not sturdy enough to get into a wrestling ring for real um, and uh, we've we, we've just done a lot of things over the years we had a radio show when we were in college uh, and we've always just tried to be creative and different than everybody else and so when the idea you know we, we like you know that we've talked about we grew up on some horror host you know I there was there was never really a horror host in Pensacola when I was a kid which was sad to me but I did get to see people like Sir, Sir Cecil Creep who was on the Nashville network um, he was he was their horror host I got to see you know Elvira obviously in her big run but as I got older I started getting into horror hosts and when the internet came along I was able to look up and find information about all these hosts so that kind of and and Chip was also interested in the same kind of thing and we have the same kind of um, comedy influences, you know, from David Letterman to SCTV to Monty Python to the Andy Griffith show to The Simpsons, you know. And one of the things we still have to ask ourselves, as many shows do now, is have The Simpsons done this before we do a bit? Because they've done everything now. So that that is a challenge. But those are our favorite kind of shows. Those are the comedies that really, you know, I'm a huge Andy Kaufman fan. So anything we can do to get a reaction out of the audience, that's what we're going for. Mittens is the, I think Mittens is in many ways the everyman of our show. I think he, he, he's a, a constant commenter even though he doesn't ever say a word. Uh, if you watch him, some of his expressions through that mask, uh, Lemmy who plays Mittens, are incredible. Uh, his hand gestures, any, everything he does is just, it's just icing on the cake. It's just so gorgeous to watch when you watch the show. And one of the things about it is that Chip and I never get to see what he's doing because a lot of what he does, we, we tell him certain things to do and stuff and, and, you know, kind of, but most of it's improvised. And so we never get to see it until we see the finished product. And so it's always a big shock and we're always laughing at what Mittens is doing in the corner over there. Who have we met? Um... Hmm. Well, one of the films that we have coming up this season is Warriors of the Wasteland, a.k.a. The New Barbarians. And one of the people in those, in those films is uh, Fred the Hammer Williamson. And I'm lucky enough to be acquaintances with Fred the Hammer Williamson, who, you know, of course, most famously was probably in M.A.S.H. Uh, he, he was in the original movie, Robert Altman's M.A.S.H. But he did a lot of uh, sort of black exploitation films in the 70s, really great movies. Um, and we got to talk to him about some of the films and interview him a little bit about working with Bruno Mattei, who directed that film, uh, and working in Italy and, and how that was. And, and so that's been really fun. Um, Jackie Naaman Jones, who is in th the first episode of this upcoming season four, uh, is, was the child in Manos, The Hands of Fate, widely considered the worst film of all time. And, and Jackie's been great to talk to about movies and all that sort of stuff. And there's, there's been other people that we've run into from time to time. Uh, that, that either are connected via, they're actually in the film or they worked on the film and it's really fun to always talk to them about it. I think I would start them with our debut episode now, which is A Bucket of Blood. I think it's such a wonderful, funny film and I think our bits around it are also really, really funny. The other one I'm gonna mention, of course, is the always in copyright Limbo, Plan 9 from Outer Space. I think it's one of our best episodes. I think everyone should see that one and hopefully Hopefully, soon they will, again, be able to see that episode. Um, but this season, I, I think Manos is gonna be one that people are really gonna enjoy. Um, I'm also fond of Shriek of the Mutilated. I think there's a lot of good and a lot of, a lot of funny in that one. And we get to see the return of uh, Lightfoot Spivey, one of our favorite characters from last season, uh, who's gonna return. Uh, he's, he's sort of a backwoods kind of guy. Hey, I'm Mike Inslee, the Baron Mondo Von Doren from Nightmare Theater, and I want to invite all of you to watch season four of our show. 
whether you watch it on your local PBS station, your public television station, or the PBS app. Just, just give us some attention. We just really need it. We're really empty inside.